good morning to your neighbor. If you're here to do that, why don't you just go ahead and give your neighbor a smile, say something to your neighbor. Let them know that a real human being is sitting beside them. <laughs> you know, the smile is a sign of life that something is still going on inside. Praise God. Whatever has taken smiles away from your face, uh, this week has come to an end. Jesus, as you step into a new week, I see you smiling all through. I, said, I see you smiling all through. I see you laughing all through. The Lord will restore joy into somebody's heart this week. In the precious name of Jesus. Every cause of sorrow is removed. I cannot hear your amen. But somebody think Let everything that causes sorrow is removed. In the name of Jesus. There shall be definite div divine interventions this week. You will see the hand of God in particular ways. In the precious name of Jesus. The last few days to the end of the month of October. I see God showing up for somebody here. name of Jesus. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. So I see your joy restored. And so I see your strength also restored. Somebody is receiving fresh inspiration to pursue and overtake until you recover all. Whatever the enemy may have spoke to, stolen this year, I decree in the name of Jesus you are recovering. I said you are recovering. You are not going to finish this year defeated. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The step into a season of divine recovery. For someone here in November, it's a season of divine recovery for you. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. Glory be to Jesus. The truest things that we can believe about ourselves are the things that God said about us. Not what our situation is saying. The song said, I am. I am. I am who oh God says that. My boss says that I am. Yeah. I'm not who the doctor says I am. The Bible says, uh, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the hand of God been revealed? As I think from verse 1. You, you need to believe the, hand of the, the report of God if you want to see the hand of God. And one of the ways by which we believe uh, or we see the hand of God is just wholeheartedly believing the report of God. We need to believe what God has said concerning us. We need to see ourselves the way God is seeing us. And that's what leads to, you know, the manifestations of God's grace and God's hand in our lives. I just want to encourage someone this morning as you get into a new week. The truest things you can know about yourself or you should know about yourself is what God has said concerning you, not what the situation is saying. Everything is speaking to you. And most of the time they're speaking from the point of view of stealing your job. Yeah. The Bible says in John 10 and verse 10, it said, the enemy has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And it's a progression. The first thing is to steal. Yeah, to steal. And what does the devil steal? I mean, you may not be able to steal your money, but if he steals your joy, you are stolen everything. Yeah. You may have everything in place, but if you allow him to steal your joy, you are stolen your energy, your, your power of inspiration. And then, you know, you know, fear paralyzes initiative. The moment your joy is stolen, then fear takes residence, and you're, you're, you're not able to move and to get things done. That will not be your portion this week. Amen. And that will not be your portion in this new month, in the precious name of Jesus. If you've not been around um, a, a, a while, we've been teaching in a teaching series on the greatness curriculum, and this morning we're rounding off you know, this short teaching series. I believe God this morning uh, that the word is coming into somebody's heart that will reconfigure your heart Amen. in the precious name of Jesus. It's been a very, very powerful month of, um, of, of October. We've seen the hand of God like never before. We celebrated our seventh anniversary and uh, we, we, we've celebrated you know, greatness and the good things that God has done. Our mission, like you know, is to make greatness come on. We believe that every man and every woman has a seed of greatness that God has planted. The Bible says we're created in his image and likeness. Genesis chapter 1 and 26. Uh, 
He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So we are like God in the sense that God is great and you can't be the son of the great one and be a small person. And we emphasize the fact that when God called Abraham, in the book of Genesis, chapter 12, when you read from verse 1, he said, come out of your people, out of your kindred, and go to the place where I will show you. And he said, I will make your name great. Yeah. I will make your name great. So God's plan for you and I is to be great. And greatness, like we said, is not just about material acquisition, which is good in itself, because when you look at the, the, the the life of the man, Abraham, that God spoke to about greatness, he, 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 he became big, he became mighty. But it's much more than that. It's about understanding God's plans for your life, knowing your purpose, following your passion, and serving with what God has given you. Because greatness is embedded in service. Jesus said, whoever will be the greatest among you must be the servant. Then it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean servitude or you know being trampled upon. It means that you have something to give. You need to discover it and you need to serve your generation with it. And we have emphasized this you know, again and again, again and again that we need to believe. We need to open up our hearts and recognize that God's plans for us are plans of good and not of evil. To bring us to the expected end. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 said, I know the thoughts. The New says, I, I know my plans, the plans that I have for you. So they are plans to do you good and not to harm you. And somebody needs to believe that. Because sometimes the sequence of events in our lives will seem to want to negate the things that God has in mind for us. And what you believe is what you become. Yeah. What you believe is what you become. So you need to believe what God is saying. There's no point. Reading the word of God or coming to church and you know and all that, and you you still pick what you want to believe concerning the word of God. You're not doing yourself a lot of good. Yeah. Second Timothy chapter three and verse sixteen, the Bible says, All scriptures, all, not some, all scriptures have been given by the inspiration of God, and they're profitable for instruction, for reproof, for doctrine, so that a man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So all scriptures, everything that God said about me, I believe them. And it makes a world of difference about how I see myself. As we round off this series this morning, the greatness curriculum, I want to emphasize the fact that to be a great person or to, to embrace the covenant of greatness that we inherited through Abraham in God, we need to overcome the grasshopper complex. We need to overcome the grasshopper complex. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but I know there's somebody here who still needs to overcome the grasshopper complex. Because it's always there. It's always there. The devil wants to intimidate us. He wants to harass us. He knows that he doesn't have power over you. If you are a believer in Christ Jesus and you have been called, you know, by the name of God, you have authority in Christ Jesus. But when the harassment of the devil comes, when he maneuvers situations and circumstances to intimidate us, we'll forget who we are. We'll forget who we are. Yeah, that's what happens. If somebody's listening to me right now and maybe in the last six months you, 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 you've not had any then it's difficult for you to believe that you're a great person. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah, because the, the devil has manipulated situations and circumstances. Now they're speaking to you so loudly, it's difficult for you to hear what God is saying. Difficult for you to hear what God is saying. Somebody may be listening to me this morning now, and maybe you've been married for um, uh, quite a number of years, and you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. It's difficult for you to, you know, to easily grasp what I'm saying this morning because Abraham was at that point when God called him in Genesis uh, chapter 12 and when you read you know, 13, 14, 15 up to 17 there were conversations going on between Abraham and God and Abraham was asking God well you said you make me great how come just, just having children has become an issue that's what I'm talking about because when we're in such situations where there was manipulated circumstances it then becomes difficult to see beyond our nose it, it becomes difficult to see what God is planning to do and that he has plans and when you talk about plans you're talking about seasons of life and one season should not be too strong to you know to dominate your thoughts and shut your mind down from seeing the fact that god still has plans for your life 
What most people don't understand is that there's nothing you can do if if a season you know of, of dryness is supposed to be three months a year or something like that. You know, the best you can do is to pray that God see me through this season. There may be one or two rains in the season, but rain is not going to come as heavily as it will come in the season of rain. I'm saying the truth this morning, and I see somebody here listening to me this morning. God is changing the seasons of. God is changing the seasons of your life. But somebody here this morning, God is speaking to you. That is your strength in the midst of the storm. And this season will come to pass. But watch how you use your mouth. Watch how you think about this season. Because there's no season that lasts forever. Even in the things of the physical. Have you seen a winter that lasts forever? No. So if you're in winter right now, you need to understand that winter cannot last forever. It may not look so good, but it can't last forever. That's why the Bible says, may for the night when the morning joy comes. Say amen to somebody. Yeah. See joy coming to somebody's heart this morning. In the precious name of Jesus. So, evolving into greatness demands that we overcome the grasshopper complex. Don't forget we're teaching the greatness curriculum. It, in, it involves that we overcome, you know, how we see ourselves as very low. Matthew 4, verse 19, when Jesus called his disciples, there was one statement he made. He said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. This is the most credible leadership statement on the planet. Yeah. Most credible leadership statement on the planet. Follow me, and I will make you. So it's possible for a man to be made into what he, did, what he cannot see himself to be right now. And that's the plan of God for us all of the time. That he wants to make something out of us. And it starts from how we see ourselves. It starts from within. The big statement that Jesus made to his disciples is to reconfigure their mind about how they see themselves. So as they followed him, they saw themselves changing from fishers for fish to fishers of men. And it, it made a lot of difference about you know, what they aspired to do. You see, we made this morning. Made a world of difference. Regarding what they aspire to do. What are you aspiring to do? And what is the harassment of the devil that is keeping you away from it? It's very important that you understand that God wants us to venture. Let's read uh, Numbers 13 and 14. I'm going to read a bit of scriptures there as we look at you know, the incident of uh, the grasshopper complex and how this can limit the hand of God over a people. Praise God. I said, praise God. I, I can hear some feedback at my back. Please, can you fix it? It's um, a bit distracting. Praise God. All right. Uh, Numbers 13. Numbers 13, I'll read from verse 1. It's a long reading. I'll just read it in, in patches, but I, I want to uh, bring something whole out of this passage of the scripture. I, 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 and I need you to follow me very carefully. Numbers 13 and from verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the children of Israel, from each tribe of their fathers. You shall send a man, everyone a leader amongst them. Now, Israel had a promise of God to get to the promised land. And that's like evolving into a new level. And before this will happen, God spoke to Moses and he said, send some men to that land. Let them spy the land. Let them just look at it from afar and see what is going on there. Let them check what is going on there. And the Lord told Moses, he said, pick leaders from among them. Not, the spies were not supposed to be ordinary men. What I'm speaking to this morning is also about leadership. You cannot evolve into greatness if you don't see yourself as a leader. If you don't see yourself as somebody who can overcome limitations, who can overcome, you know, complex, the grasshopper complex or, or inferiority complex as the case may be. Because it takes a leadership mindset to step into greatness and to achieve great things. 
And this was what God was trying to do in the heart of his people. Don't forget that last Sunday we established the fact that we have been made children of God after the order of the biological Jews. Because it's the same promise of Abraham, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 14. Yeah. That he said, we that are Gentiles can now enjoy the privilege of being children of God through Abraham. So that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. The Gentiles who are now in Christ Jesus, that they might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So our Christianity is premised on a, 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 a particular contract that has been in existence. Yeah. That's what is called covenant, con contract. It's the same contract. The same contract that God had with Abraham is what subsists in Christ Jesus. So whatever you see in the Jews, as you read about them in the Bible, you can appropriate them. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying this morning. Yeah. So when God wants to take his people into the promised land, when God wants to take you into your promised land, which I know that's what God wants to do, he demands something from us that we evolve into true leadership. So the leadership of these 12 guys that were chosen was to be tested. It demands from us that we can spy what is ahead of us and not be intimidated. Because the more intimidated you become, the further you are from entering into your promised land. So to evolve into greatness, we must be able to overcome that. So God told Moses, he said, pick 12 from each tribe. And each of them should be leaders. One of the greatest problems that we have in this nation today, and not just in this nation, in our world today, and in the continent of Africa today, is that the people who are supposed to spy the promised land and take us in there, they are intimidated by the promised land. So we keep skirting around it. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying today. Yeah. Some, of, some, some people, I've heard many people say it, that our leaders travel, they go everywhere in the world, how come they cannot replicate how come they cannot just, you know, and we say it as if it's that easy. Because the ability to replicate starts from how you see yourself. If you don't have the can-do spirit, you just wish it away. Yeah, and that was what happened to these people. That's what happened to these people here. So the Bible says here, in verse 2, it says, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. I am giving to the children of Israel. God said, this is what I'm giving to them, but send men to spy the land. From each tribe of their father, you shall send a man, everyone a leader amongst them. But what kind of leader are they? And that's the same question I'm asking you this morning. Are you a leader? And what kind of leader are you? So Moses sent them from the wilderness, apparently, according to the demand, the, the command of the Lord, all of them, men who were heads of the children of Israel. So they were, so, so I mean, so he mentioned their names. Out of all these names, I'm, I'm definitely sure that as many people here who have read the Bible before, if I ask you, which ones can you remember? Can we just try? Which ones can you remember? Yeah. So most people will say Joshua and Caleb. As if they were the only ones. There were 12 people. But till tomorrow, we only remember Joshua and Caleb. Meanwhile, the Bible mentioned the name of everybody. <laughs> yeah, R read it there from verse 4 all the way. You read about the names of all the 12 and their tribes, where they came from. Yet, we only remember two at all. So, you realize that in life, there will always be the two and the ten. Glory be to Jesus. Now, look at the, the instruction that Moses gave them. Verse 18. He said, and see what the land is like. Whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many. Specific things that Moses said they should do. The people who dwell in it, are they strong or weak? Are they few or many? Whether the land they dwell in is good or bad. Whether the city they inhabited are like camps or strongholds. Whether the land is rich or poor, whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruits of the land as evidence. Let's see what's going on there. Now, the Lord, 
Uh, the time was a season of first ripe grapes. You know, so bring some of the stuff in the land. Let us see. Let's see what it looks like. It's like when, you know, for some of us back in the day, the first person to go to the West from your family, we usually take a picture and send it back home. You see them posing beside a car or in front of a skyscraper. And that was back, I mean, back in the day that the only skyscraper in the Southwest is the Cocoa House in Ibadan. <laughs> so when you see such pictures, you're like, wow. This, this was kind of thing. Moses said, bring, bring the, the fruit of the land. Let's see what it looks like. Perhaps it will create some measure of inspiration in our heart. Desire in our heart to want to go in. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. Because the land they went to, to, to spy was a developed economy. Because they said things work there. The land was flowing with milk and honey. Everything was working there. They went to spy and they said, this is where I'm taking you. So, let's fast forward. They brought back their report. <laughs> but, um, let's start from verse 27 again. Numbers 13 and verse 27. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It's, it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified. Moses already said, check whether it was camp or strongholds. So it was supposed to be funny. I mean, it was part of the option. So the, the, the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of the Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittite and the Jebusite, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell in, by the sea and along the bank of Jordan. When they were talking like that, and they were describing all this big intimidating stuff, you know what Caleb did? Caleb quieted them. Verse 30. Then Caleb quieted them, the, the, the people, before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. Verse 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they, they gave the children of Israel a bad, somebody say bad report. We come and say it again, say bad. It's a very bad report. Give them a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. Yet people are living there, and they are massive people. Yeah. If truly the land devours its inhabitants, is it not the massive people we should devour first? Why should we be looking for small, small people? Yeah, that, that, I mean, if I were them, that's what I would think, that these people, the land we eat them, they have most, those of us that are, you know, uh, smally like this, they will just be hiding and be doing our own business in the land. It, 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 shouldn't that be? <laughs> Praise God. I, I, I thought that that's what they should be thinking about, that we can dodge, those people cannot dodge. Yeah. <laughs> but they said the land devours its inhabitants, the men of great stature and all that. There we saw the giant, the descendants, of Anak came from the giant and we were like what? I cannot hear you. Yeah, said so they were, were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so were we in their side. Genesis 14 and verse 1. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried and the people wept that night and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation said to them if only we had died in the land of Egypt. If only we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? That our wives and children should become victims. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. You see the plan? It was for them to select a leader and return to Egypt. And, you know, I, I truly wonder how they came to this point. That this is the effect of a bad report. The effect of a 
for bad reports. Bad reports, you know, just breaks our heart. Bad reports does something to us that is, you know, you, you can't measure the effect of it. The effect of what bad reports really do. And that's, that's you, you can imagine people who have been in slavery for years, 430 years. And they had an opportunity for a change. And just seeing something that is intimidating, they are willing to go back into slavery. We need to go back into slavery. But I love, you know, what Joshua and Caleb did. The Bible says in verse 6 of Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 14, or sorry, Numbers 14, it says, But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. Somebody say good land. Good land. Said it's an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Said only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land. For we, for they are what? Can I hear you again? They are our bread. They are protection as departed from them, and the Lord is with us. So this thing is premise about how we see ourselves and who is with us. And if we understand that he is with us, God is with us, said, do not fear them. And all the congregation uh, said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Glory be to Jesus. I know it's a long reading. I warned you ahead of time. I just read everything just for the sake of people here who are not familiar with that story. Because except you are able to glean something out of that story, you won't know that the devil has not changed strategy. It's still the same strategy. Still the same strategy. Intimidation, harassment, trying to break your heart and show you that what is ahead of you is too big for you. This is how people get into depression because I know those people were depressed. That's why they wanted to go back into slavery. You couldn't have suffered for 430 years and you have an opportunity of escape and the only thing you're thinking about is how to get back. Yeah. Something is wrong. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what people do when it looks like their minds are shutting down and they cannot comprehend what is going on. But it's important for us to note this morning that a slave cannot lead other slaves out of slavery. So whether you are the head of your home You run a business, and thank God from next week, we're going to be, you know, getting to our enterprise development month, uh, taking new territories and all that. So there there couldn't have been a better message to usher us into November. You need to understand that God is counting on you to lead yourself into greatness and to lead other people into greatness. But God's pattern is out of the recognition of the fact that a slave cannot lead a slave out of slavery. So when you see God's pattern, when he sent Moses, when Moses was born, God made it to be that Moses will be eating away from slavery. So you have a different mindset, a different, completely different mindset from the people. So Moses growing up in Pharaoh's palace is a way of God saying, you know what? It takes a free man to lead people out of slavery. When God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, and say, come out of your people, is that Abraham would define a new lineage for his people. But before he will be able to lead them, he has to come out of them with a different mindset. If somebody say with me today. Yeah. We can't make impacts in Nigeria if we think like the ordinary average Nigerian. Yeah. For God to use you and I to do something differently in this land, we have to be different. We have to think differently. We have to think differently. We have to think differently. Glory be to Jesus. And if you have maybe spent some time abroad and then you relocated back into Nigeria, this message is also very appropriate for, for you. Because some people have lived abroad. You saw how things were working there. You came back and you blended. Yeah. But well, that's, that's what happened. And you just blended into what's going on. Let's, let's do it the way they are doing it. Yeah. 
But that's not God's divine order. God's divine order is that the people who will evolve into greatness and who will lead other people into greatness must think differently. They must think differently. They must have a different mindset. So a leader must be able to think in a manner that is superior to those that are following him. Must be able to think differently. Think differently. Think differently. The slavery mindset does something. It truncates the growth of your leadership quotient. And if you really want to grow your leadership quotient, you must do something about the slavery mindset. You know, part of our problem in Africa is that we've been colonized. So it has residual effect in our thinking, whether you like it or not. You can say in Jesus' name, it's not my portion. Yeah. But that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. We've been colonized, so we, we still have the, the residue of what happened to the Jews. That's why a black man, ordinary black man, will always feel inferior to a white man. Yeah. Because you heard that they were our masters. <laughs> yeah. some, some ignorant white men will come into this country and open doors with their skin color that some of the most astute Nigerians are struggling to open just because they are white. It's our mind. Because the black man wants to run after the white man. Yeah. Am I saying the truth? Yeah. And God wants to heal our mind from, especially those of us who are now in Christ Jesus. Our destiny is greatness. We need to understand it and recognize it and work with it. That's what I'm talking about this morning. So the slavery mindset will truncate the growth of your leadership caution. Let's look at the effect of slavery the effect of slavery from Numbers 13 and 14 that we read. One is identity crisis, resulting in an inferior, inferiority complex. Yeah, so low self-esteem. The way the 10 saw themselves from the scripture that we read in Genesis 13 and 14, I mean, Numbers 14, 13 and 14, you see that it was different. It was the effect of slavery. You see, some of the people we're talking about that they were born into slavery. After 430 years of Jacob moving into Egypt, can you understand what would have happened? They had forgotten who they were. The only thing they knew about themselves was that they were slaves. Generations and generations in slavery. They had a particular thinking pattern that they had followed. They lost their sense of identity completely. That was why they could be harassed and they could see themselves as grasshoppers. Yeah. And they said, so were we in their sight without interacting with them. At least before you conclude that somebody is seeing you as inferior to them, you should ask them. Yeah. Because if you are comfortable in your own skin, even if somebody is looking, just looking at you somehow, you tell them, lift your head now. A real human being is talking to you, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something in you should tell you that, no, this look should not intimidate me. But what happens when a people, a people has they've been in slavery for 430 years, the effect of it will show. It shows on how they look down on themselves. May the Lord heal somebody here this morning of inferiority complex. In the name of Jesus. What I, see, you need to make up your mind. What I have or what I don't have, they don't define me. Yeah. If a lady here this morning listen to me, the Lord has a word for you. The fact that you are here to conceive does not define you. Yeah. Does not define you. Does not define you. And you need to understand that. You need to understand that. Because it's only when you see yourself the way God sees you that you receive the capacity to conceive. The Bible says, sing, O barren. Because you, you are seeing yourself differently. People call you barren, they draw a boundary around you. All those nomenclatures, they don't make us. Those are evil reports. Yeah. Those are evil reports. It's not about what people call you. It's feedback. You take it as feedback and you move on. You say, but this is not me. I don't know if you're, you're getting what I'm saying today. Very important. Another thing, another effect of slavery is a sense of entitlement. You know what? A slave doesn't have to think of what to eat. A slave doesn't have to, if the slave master wants or likes, let him not feel the slave. He will suffer for it. It's like when you don't wear your car. Which one is car's problem with where? 
I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Have you seen a car worrying about fuel before? Yeah. You are you the owner of the car. If you like, don't put fuel. Don't put engine oil and then decide to drive it. You 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 drive yourself. I don't know if you are getting what that's that's what it means to be a slave. A slave does not have to think about anything. So when the, one of the greatest effects of slavery is an entitlement mindset. Whenever you see anybody who has an entitlement mindset, and there are lots of them in Africa, it's a slavery mindset. God has not created us to have an entitlement mindset. So the Israelites refused to grow up. They had a cycle of whining to get their way, and they didn't want to have to walk to take Canaan. That's the problem. They, they, they had this mindset, you know, when we cry to God, God just shows up. Yeah, and that's the, also the mindset of the average Nigerian Christian. That's why I've made up my mind this church is going to be different. Yeah, this church is going to be filled with responsible people Amen. and responsible Christians. Yeah. The average Nigerian Christian just wants to go to church and be very emotional and cry and shout before God. And the next day, the heaven will just open. But yet they refuse to engage their mind and take responsibility for their life and think and be strategic. Is somebody say with me this morning and think, what do I have in my hand? We've said that greatness is not far from you. It's within you. It's around you. Everyone that God used in the Bible to do some great stuff, he used the things around them. In Moses, when he got to the presence of Pharaoh, God said, what's in your hand? He said, the rod said, drop it. It's what you already have. Yeah, you know Moses could have gotten there and just kneel down and just be praying. Ah, 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 ah. And then the ground would just open and swallow Pharaoh. That's what the African mindset. But God said you have something, use it. Use it, use it. Follow instruction and use it. And be strategic about it and think about how you want to use it. That's what I'm talking about this morning. That's what I'm talking about this morning. Somebody with an entitlement mindset will blame everybody for the way they are. Yeah, it's my uncle that did not give me a room in his house. It's uh, my older brother that just got a job from our company. He has not sent allowance to me since. I see if he got a job because of you. Yeah. And you're a grown-up too. That's an entitlement mindset. That's a slavery mindset. It reduces your capacity to think for yourself and to think about life and engage God in a very strategic manner. Somebody say with me this morning. Very, very important. So when they were in Egypt, they blamed Pharaoh. When they got out of Egypt, they blamed Moses. Yeah. And people with an entitlement mindset will always look for somebody to blame. They, tell, they told Moses, why did you bring us out? You should have left us there. At least when we were there, we had cucumber, we had garlic, we had... <laughs> yeah. You know, I brought us into this place now. And we're just suffering. What did he not understand? That there's a price to pray for freedom. It's called the burden of freedom. And the burden of freedom is responsibility. Yeah. It's responsibility. That's the burden of freedom. It comes upon you the moment you think freedom. You have to take responsibility. So a free person is the one that is willing to develop leadership and management skills. That's a, a free person. I don't care who you are, but if you refuse to develop leadership or management skills, you are still a slave. Because somebody has to manage you, and somebody has to lead you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah? Somebody has to manage you, somebody has to lead you. That's what happens to slaves. The moment you think freedom, you must think responsibility. Yeah, you must think responsibility. If you have kids listening to me this morning, don't wait until they are 18 before you allow them to take responsibility for certain things. Because the reason why some kids are turning, not turning out well is because they're just thrown into unusual freedom without a training in responsibility. Yeah. Just throw them into, you are, you are not 18, you just do, do. You know, in the West, they throw them out of the house. Somebody who has not learned how to survive, and they just throw them out. And they get out there, just misbehave, live riotous life, just anyhow. Are you still with me today? I said, are you still with me today? Very, very important. Let, 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 let me take one more and, and, and I'll hand. Another effect of slavery is 
of poverty mindset, the not enough mindset. Not enough minds. All these things I'm mentioning this morning, they are the things stopping people from evolving to greatness, not the devil. Yeah. Or the devil uses them to stop people. Yeah. Not enough mindset. So when they crave for small, small things in the wilderness and they enjoy manna and they say the promised land is flowing with milk and honey and then you go to the border of promised land so people went to spy the place and because they said there were giants in the land you said we're okay with this or better still take us back into slavery the Bible says they decided to look for among them to choose leader that will take them back see that's what we do in this country for instance consistently yeah if people deserve the kind of leader they get you know how we're going to change Nigeria we we'll change the people yeah we we'll change the people we we'll pray for the leaders and change the people yeah. you and I cannot walk into Azo Rock but you can walk into a baby saloon <laughs> yeah you can walk into you can walk into your office and give a different mindset that's what we're talking about God gave them a leader they decided to choose another one the one that suits them their idiosyncrasies and their mindset because of where they are in their own mind. Glory be to Jesus. Why was it so easy for them to believe the ten, not the two? How they have been configured. That's so simple. They believed the ten and not the two because of how their minds were working. Simple. That was what happened. Some people said, this is possible. We are able to do this. They said, no. We choose to believe these people. The effect of slavery. The effect the mindset that they carry and God will not be able to do much with people with a wrong mindset you know what happened to these people time will not permit me this one eventually God got so frustrated with them he said they're not going to enter the promised land uh, everyone you know except the ones that were born outside of slavery while they were in the wilderness those were the ones who entered the ones who came from slavery they struggled with the slavery mindset to the point where God said, you'll perish in the wilderness. Glory be to Jesus. Do you want to evolve into greatness? You need to think differently. You need to receive divine capacity to see yourself the way God sees you. The truest things that you can believe about yourself is what God has said concerning you. I'm talking about poverty mindset. Don't allow where you are financially to define who you are. There are two different things. The Bible says we despise all the days of little beginnings. But it didn't say we should be little in our thinking. Yeah. It didn't say we should be little in our thinking. I think it's 1 Timothy 6, uh, 6, 6 that says, uh, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. Having the promise of the life that now is and the one that is to come. But it said godliness with contentment, not containment. There are two different things. Yeah. Contentment says, I'm happy with where I am on the way to where I'm going. Containment says, but which bus stop? Final bus stop. This is okay. Yeah. It's okay. We don't want promised land. Leave it for the giants. <laughs> yeah. That's what containment says. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. So we need to trust God this morning to think differently. Can I request that you stand just for a minute? Can you stand? Can you stand? Can you stand? I don't think we should end this kind of teaching this morning. You know, usually I, 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 I won't say you should pray like this, but I, I just feel that somebody needs to desire, you know, grace coming upon your heart to, for fresh information about yourself. First John chapter 5 and verse 4, the Bible says that you have God, little children, and you have overcome them, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this victory overcomes the world, our faith. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Paul writing there, he said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I now live, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and died for me. So I'm seeing myself different. Yeah. I'm seeing myself different. Somebody ready to see yourself differently this morning. Yeah. I want you to think about some of the things that really harass your mind. And perhaps suggest to you that you are not the one God is talking about when he talks about the promised land. 
whatever places limitations on your mind like it did to the ten and then it affected the, the multitude will you lift the two hands to Jesus this morning and begin to pray Lord I receive fresh grace over my mind today that the situations around my life will not limit me from evolving to the fullness of what you have in mind for me I break free from every slavery mindset I break free from not enough mindset I break free from the grasshopper complex I no longer see myself as a grasshopper I qualify not by myself but by the power and the blood I declare this morning that I qualify for greatness you have qualified me for greatness so I accept it I receive it I know it for myself I believe who I am in Christ Jesus. I believe who I am in Christ Jesus. Somebody speak to Jesus this morning. Speak to Jesus this morning. Say, I believe every word that you have spoken concerning me. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe. If all that you can say this morning is, Lord, I believe. Like the man before Jesus said, Lord, I believe, help thou my own belief. If that's the only thing you can say this morning, please say it. Let him know that you believe. Let him know that you believe. Let him know that you believe in where he's taking you. Let him know that you believe that greater days are ahead of you. Let him know that you believe. There are so many lands to conquer. Let him know that you believe. Let him know that you believe that an end has not come to your career. Let him know that you believe that an end has not come to that business. Let him know that you believe that are greater things ahead of you. Somebody let God know that you believe this morning that that sickness is not going to limit your destiny. And that some righteousness is arising with healing in his wings. That you believe that you are healed. That you believe that that marriage will work out. That the promised land of matter bliss will not elude you. Will somebody pray this morning? That you believe, that you believe. Just start from believing. As we reconfigure our hearts this morning. And step out of limitation. And step out of the slavery mindset. qualified us not by our own strength but he chose us he qualified us not my qualification but your qualification Jesus and I believe I believe I believe I believe father we bless your name Lord thank you give you glory and we give you praise today we give you glory and we give you praise today Lord we speak a blessing over everyone under the influence of this service this morning everyone joining this service online and everyone who has chosen to believe this morning will receive newness in the name of Jesus whosoever the son of man has set free your word says is free indeed so we receive grace upon everyone here this morning to be free indeed. In the name of Jesus, everyone running away from responsibility, everyone embracing mediocrity, we decree this morning that the hold of mediocrity is broken. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we also decree today that the hold of mediocrity is broken over our nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that a new set of leaders are arising from here. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, we receive grace this morning to lead. Starting from our homes, starting from our businesses. In the name of Jesus, everything limiting us, we break loose from them. We see ourselves the way you see us. We receive and believe in the victory of the cross of Jesus Christ. And we declare this morning that we are unlimited. We cannot be limited. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lord, as we step into a new week and as we step into a new month, we decree in the name of Jesus that the month of November brings goodness. It brings increase. It brings restoration. For someone here is bringing restoration with compensation. Not only will you receive back that which has been stolen, it shall be with compensation. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I said it shall be restoration with compensation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For someone here, the month of November marks an end to pain in your body. So before November is over, your healing will spring forth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I see a doctor's report changing. In the name of Jesus, someone is receiving a letter of appointment in November. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you. I see peace in someone's family in November. And I decree this morning that fresh grace comes upon everyone. Wave your hands to him and bless him. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We give you glory and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you praise. Somebody say, I receive, I believe, I receive, I believe, I receive, I believe, I receive. I'm a believer, I'm not a doubter. I believe, I receive. I'm a believer, I'm not a doubter. Glory be to Jesus. If you're blessed this morning, put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Please, you may have your seat. You may have your seat. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Can I ask that we just bow down our heads just for our final prayer? We never love to close a service without giving people the opportunity to commit afresh to Jesus. The Bible says it's not willing that any will perish, but that all will come to repentance. So if there's anyone here this morning, you feel far from God. You think something has disconnected you totally from Jesus. You cannot say in your heart that you are a child of God. If Jesus should come today, you're not sure that you will go home with him. I want to say a prayer with you as you bring this service to a close. I just want to say a prayer with you. That God will come into your heart and give you a new beginning. Something new will start in your life from this moment. Is there anyone who wants to say this prayer with me this morning? Maybe you've never given your life to Christ before, but you see a reason right now to come into a vital connection with God. Or somebody who has said a prayer before, but you know you backslid into sin, and you want Jesus to forgive your sins, and you want to rededicate your heart to Jesus. Can I ask that you lift your right hand above your head, wherever you may be sitting, and say this prayer with me this morning. Something new will start in your life, and you'll never be the same again. Will you lift your right hand above your head, and say this prayer with me this morning. Something new will start in your life from this moment forward. If your hand is up, I want you to lift it well. If you are, you know, having any trouble in your heart at all, it means that you need to be a part of the prayer. That means you are not sure. And it won't cost you anything. It's just a decision that you make this morning. You'll never be the same again. So if you have any doubt in your heart at all as to your relationship with God, this is the time to say this prayer. It's just a short prayer. And you'll never be the same again. If your hand is up, can you stand by your chair right there? Just stay where you are, but stand, stand. Join me and stand. Thank you for standing, my brother. Just join me and stand. Just stand by your chair right there. And let's say this. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Just stand by your chair right there. And let's say this prayer together. Thank you for standing, sir. Thank you for standing, sir. It's better to be sure. It's better to be sure that Jesus is in your life and that you have a covenant with God. If you're standing, I want you to say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I cannot help myself. So I come to you today asking that you forgive me my sins and that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I receive you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. I willingly and totally submit my heart to you. Come into my life. Give me a new life and fill my heart with your spirit. Thank you for accepting me the way I am. I pledge my life to you from this moment forward to live the rest of my life for you. And I receive grace this morning in your presence. Thank you for accepting me. If you just say this prayer with me, our counselors are just around you. If you look to your left or your right, you see someone just beside you there. Can you just pick whatever you brought to church and follow them? Just follow them. Can you help me just prompt them and just, just follow them quickly? 
Uh, uh, you'll be back with us in just a few minutes. We'd love to put some materials in your hand. And our counselors will also want to get your details so that we can be a part of your spiritual development and sport. I wanted to help me appreciate everyone taking a decision this 